How do you make a tidy breadboard? It's chip tips, chip tips. I have no music and I can't sing. You can use regular jumpers like this. They're of fixed length and then you can just wire point to point. The problem is that when you've got 10, 20, 30, 40 of these jumpers, it just looks like a big jumbled mess. It's not very nice to look at. It's not very photogenic. It's not very YouTube-genic. So let's suppose I've got a couple of chips. I'm just picking some random chips here. Okay, there are our chips. And we want to wire from one pin to the other. Well, we know that the holes on a breadboard are 0.1 inches apart. And they're made that way simply so that they can fit dip packages, which have a pin pitch of 0.1 inches. In addition, the holes on either side of this divide are 0.3 inches apart, and again, they're made that way because that's the way the dips are shaped. And what about the distance between one of these holes and one of these power holes? Well, unfortunately, that's not 0.3 inches. It's actually seven millimeters, which turns out to be about 0.26 inches, which is pretty unfortunate. On the other hand, these holes are all 0.1 inches apart. So let's go ahead and make a jumper that goes from this corner pin over to this corner pin. Well, how much are we gonna need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So that's 1.9 inches. Now, of course, you're gonna need a little bit on the ends. So I've cut this wire so that it's 0.3 inches and it fits quite nicely. If we bend it over, you can see that there is a little bit of metal sticking out, but it'll do for now. So we measured 1.9 inches across. Now we need to add 0.6 inches for either end. So that's 2.5 inches. Now I have a Knipex brand wire stripper. It's the wire stripper that I absolutely recommend if you're going to use a wire stripper. You can set the depth of the strip using this adjustment over here. So all I have to do, okay, don't you want one of these now? So 2.5 inches or thereabouts. Let's go ahead and cut that. Here are my flush cutters, which makes it very easy to simply cut the wire properly to the proper length. One, two, and you're done. So, Let's take a look and see if the length is correct. And it is. So now all I have to do is bend the ends and put the wire in. And there we go. There is a nice wire. It's also quite photogenic. So now what happens if say we want to go from here down to ground? Well, we know that that's seven millimeters. So I'm just going to measure out seven millimeters. Okay, convert to inches. It's eh, about 0.27 inches say. Well, again, we know that we have to add 0.6. So that's 0.87. So let's go ahead and make that cut. Now, obviously you don't wanna be measuring that all the time. However, jumpers between ground and minus and VCC and plus are quite frequent. So you're gonna to wanna to make a whole bunch of jumpers of this size. So here we go, 0.87, almost 0.875. And I'm gonna cut the ends. There's one. And there's two. And there's my crazy little jumper. Is it the right size? Indeed it is. So I bend the ends over. And I put the jumper in. And there we go. Another perfect jumper. Let's talk about jumping the divide. And let's suppose, I don't know, we want to connect uh, this far wire up to this far wire over here. So that's one, two, three, four. 
and then we go three, so that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we need 1.1 inches. Add 0.6 and that's 1.7 inches. And bent, and there we go. There's another wire. Maybe it's not perfectly straight. And the reason that it's not perfectly straight is that I did slightly make it slightly bigger. Okay, now let's suppose you want to make a bend in your wire. So for example, let's suppose you're going from this pin right over here, across, down, and across to here. Well, when you bend a wire, you're not making an exact 90 degree angle. And if I measure it against the pins, your bend is actually going to go inside. So you need to subtract a little bit. And a rule of thumb would be to subtract half of 0.1 for each bend that you're going to make. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cross the gap, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, now we add six for the ends, so 19 plus six is 25, and we made two bends, so that's 24. So we're gonna need a 2.4 inch wire. Bend the ends in, and there's our jumper. So we wanna go from here down to here, so I'm gonna put the wire in, and then I'm going to make a nice sharp bend. And then I'm going to make another nice sharp bend. And there we go. A perfect jumper. So now the question is what happens if you're having a jumper that goes over another jumper? Well, if I were to put this jumper on, there is enough slack in that jumper to go across one level of jumper. Now, if it were two levels or three levels, then things get a little dicey. But if you measure one of these typical jumper wires, you'll see that it's about half of 0.1. So if you wanna go over, say, two levels of jumper, well, just add 0.1 inches to your measurement. Anyway, that's how you create nice, clean, laid out breadboards. So remember, 0.1 inches per hole, 0.3 inches to cross the divide, and uh, about 0.26, maybe 0.27 to go across one of these power divides. For every bend, subtract half of 0.1. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks a lot, see ya. It's chip tips, chip tips. I have no music and I can't sing.